Three years ago, I received this email. Dear Hideki, your sculptures are beautiful. I wonder, do you take bone donations? I'm looking for an artist to donate my bones to once I die to be crafted into artwork. I'm not planning to die soon, but one never knows. One more regards, Anna. How mysterious it is. She requested her bones to be used for my artworks when she dies. I didn't know this woman at the time. Why did I receive such an unusual email? I'll talk about it. I'm an artist. These are my artworks. Can you guess what these flowers are made of? They are all made of animals' bones and furs. I make flowers using the original shape of bones. I don't carve or cut. I don't use wires or attachment. I assemble the same size as actual flowers using only glue. I'm looking for a common structure of nature between animals and plants. This narcissus is a combination of mouse's chin bones. The Chinese lantern plant is made of mouse's heads, tails, spines, and many ribs. The hydrangea petals are a combination of mouse's scapulas. Further rib bone and ribs. Then, when the flower is completed, I take photos. After that, I take it to a place with a good view and respectfully bow it into the ground. People often ask me, why don't you keep them? But I fear, beauty is ephemeral. Flowers are beautiful because they wither, so I don't preserve them. Finally, I keep only photos. That means I keep memories only. My art values process more than the object. I think the sense is also influenced by the culture of Japan where I was born and raised. We prefer beauty with poverty more than perfection. I name the whole process Hone Bana. Hone means bones, Bana means flowers. So far, I've already made 17 kinds of flowers. To make one whole flower, I use one to two hundred bones at the most. They are rodents like my sun rods. Where do I get so many of them? Well, they are not killed for my artworks. They are food for pet. From the my sun rods, a bone in the cages, raised, killed, and sold in pet shops as a food for big snakes and birds. I felt they seemed to symbolize how we human treat nature in modern society. I dissect them one by one, remove the furs and clean their bones. It takes several months to finish one flower. This bone taking process takes the most time. I transform the rice into flowers as if they are reborn artistically. Why did I start using bones? The trigger was this, raccoon dog skull. It was my first animal dissection. After I graduated from photography school, I went back to my hometown. I became a beekeeper's apprentice and looked after bees. I've always loved animals, so naturally I would pass through a beekeeper. Just then, I read a book, The School of Bones written by a junior high school science teacher. It teaches students how to make skeleton specimens and how interesting it is. It tells raccoon dog is the most suitable animal for beginners because of its medium size. One early morning, I found a wild raccoon dog lying beside a mountain road. It was probably hit by a car. Rod had come out a little but it didn't have a serious wound. I took it home carefully, then I read it in the bathroom and opened the book, The School of Bones. It said, first cut vertically 
on the belly. However, I couldn't touch it directly, or even look straight into its eyes. The worst thing was, I couldn't distinguish if it was truly dead. It was cold, breathless, and had no pulse. But I doubted if it had just fainted. If I cut it with a blade, it might regain consciousness and run around my room, with its bloody internal lands out. Can you imagine? It's a terrible nightmare, right? If I wasn't 100% sure of its death, I couldn't cut it. Despite the most basic, I couldn't even tell the distinction between life and death. That fact brought me a heavy shock. Three hours of hesitation, I finally gathered courage and pressed the bread on its belly. Still my hand trembled and didn't move forward. When it was over, I was just badly exhausted. I didn't remember how many hours it took. You know nothing about life on this. It seemed to talk to me. A few years later, I went to Tokyo to start my new career as a photographer, but it wasn't easy. As a forklift driver, I went back and forth between the factory and my home every day. While struggling, I was constantly seeking photos that only I could take. One cold winter dusk, I finally received a revelation to break through the depressing situation. When I passed a busy intersection, it began to rain. I entered a nearby cafe to shelter and gazed out from the second floor window. The rain got stronger, the asphalt got wetter and darker, cars came and went, and daylight reflected in the rain. People walked fast. At the intersection, some umbrellas opened. The scenery looked like lots of flowers blooming on the surface of the water. At that moment, a vision of making flowers out of bones came down from heaven. Aha! It's a flower! Flowers are symbol of beauty and life for all cultures and religions. The act of putting flowers on graves is universal beyond race. Also, lotus in the mud is known as a holy one in the Orient. I immediately went home and started looking for a after much trial and error, I finally got my first on a banner work, Lotus in Bloom. Then I continued this art for more than 10 years. During that time, the raccoon dog was saying to me, You know nothing about right on this. I feel on a banner was my answer to it. Honebana combines conflicting elements, life and death, animals and plants, beauty and ugliness, colors and monochrome, natural and artificial, and creation and destruction. I believe the important role of the artist is consider the divided values and reconnect them fundamentally. This speech is finally coming to a cross. Let's get back to the beginning. Anna, who sent me the email, is an English writer and she published two books. She possesses a donor card and wanted to donate not only her blood and organs, but also bones. We began to exchange many ideas about our past, the power of imagination, and our common ground. After that, I began to seriously consider her offer. Moreover, I want to extend 
his adventurous attempt to others. You bro, as the art, that's the next Honibana project, a new face of funeral, a new art. I started to develop a special 3D printer with a Japanese optical instrument manufacturer. The machine uses the powder of real human bone after cremation. There's no such device in the world yet. With this device, we can produce beautiful flowers with delicate and thin details like a fancy lace made of bone ashes. It can also be colored and firmness can be adjusted too. We've already begun to assemble and it will be completed next August. Anna hopes to become a poppy flower, especially she loves seeing poppies growing in the Himalayas. The wider the sitting, the more incredible their delicacy and strength she feels. So I'm planning to travel to the Himalayas to scan the wild poppies during the next blooming season. Generally, modern society tends to portray this as something negative. The form of humans remains shaped by all the traditions and religions. Strict conventions are given priority over our personality. Please try to consider this. In your funeral, you are the main character. It will arise combination, right? Have you ever deeply thought about designing it in the same way as you decide on your hairstyle every morning? How about the shirt you wear on a date? Or the writing for your bedroom? People are not our standard product. Every life is different. If so, shouldn't there be as many designs of funeral there lives? I want to create a new idea of this by using art. More beautiful, more positive, and be more true to yourself. I propose a new design that reflects our lives in a form of self-expression. Art can change the image of death. I learned it from that raccoon dog and frozen mice and rats. And now from here, the next new adventure begins. I'm very grateful to be able to share this memorable first step with you. Let's create a new way of death for each person together. Thank you.